You're listening to The Other Side of Weight Loss. I'm your host, Karen Martell, transformational nutrition coach and expert in women's weight loss and hormone health. If you are ready to go beyond diet and exercise, then tune in each week to hear from leading experts in psychology, nutrition, and spirituality as we explore the many avenues of what it really takes to lose weight and feel your best. When it comes to weight loss, one of the most important and incredible tools that you can use is hormone testing. And that is what we are talking about here today, ladies, because there is so much misinformation about hormone testing. And I get constantly, every day I've got emails coming in that says, you know, can I get my doctor to test my hormones? Do I do a saliva test? Do I do urine testing? Do I, you know, do I, and most important, do I have to test my hormones? So of course you don't have to, obviously, but when you're trying to lose weight and you're having a lot of issues with weight loss resistance, which means you're, you know, you're eating right, you're doing everything that you should be doing, you're exercising, maybe you're eating a low carb diet, but yet you're not losing weight. The number one cause of that is hormone imbalance. And you can guess, you know, you can get a good idea of what hormones might be out of balance, especially by looking at how old you are, for instance. The older you are, the more, you know, chances are that you're going to have low estrogen and progesterone and possibly testosterone. But sometimes there's other issues going on with the adrenals that you actually it can be very hard to determine if they're too high or if they're too low. So today we're going to talk about all of the ways that you can test your hormones. And I'm going to give you a very unbiased opinion of it, even though I sell my own hormone kits and I personally sell saliva hormone kits. If I could, though, I would also be selling urine hormone test kits, and we're going to get into the why of that. But I'm going to be giving you all the pros and cons of each of the hormone tests that you can get that are available to you, which will include blood testing, saliva testing, urine testing, and something called blood spot testing. I'm going to go over which hormones should be tested and when you should test them, as well as how often you should test them, what your doctors can test for, what hormone tests can only be obtained through a medical uh, professional, and also the cost, the breakdown of costs of each of these tests, and how basically to go about getting them. All right, but before we get started, I want to share with you guys Um, a new segment that I'm going to be doing. I'm going to try out because I get a lot of questions. I get a lot of questions in my email, in my Instagram, in my messenger uh, from people that have heard my podcast or heard me speak on another podcast. And so it got me thinking that, you know what, I'm going to do one segment a month where I answer your questions. Now, these are going to be quick segments. They'll be about 30 minutes long. Uh, And it's going to, you know, it could be one question. It may be a couple questions. It all is kind of, you know, how quickly can I answer them in a 30 minute segment? So if you have questions, and this can be anything that has to do with women's health, um, you know, heavy metals, you can talk about, you can ask questions about um, digestive issues, mold toxicity, hormone imbalance, of course, anything to do with hormones, anything to do with weight loss, weight loss resistance, um, you know, vice supplements, if you've got questions around supplements, bioidentical hormones, testing, you know, heavy metal testing, mold testing, gut testing, just, just ask and I will answer. So you can head over to karenmartel.com to put in your questions, or you can just email me at karen at karenmartel.com and put in the subject line question. And that will be 
shuffled over to the question inbox, <laughs> into my question file, I should say, and I will hopefully get to the get to your question in the upcoming segment. So you can send those in anytime and I will be sure to get to them. So I hope that that can just help you in your journey um, by doing this little Q&A. And I think there's so many questions that are repeatedly asked that I know that, you know, if you ask your question, I know that there's going to be so many other women with that exact same question. So don't be shy, send them on in. Um, but yeah, so let's get to today's episode on hormone testing. So as we head into our late 30s, ladies, early 40s, a few things start to happen that oftentimes we don't equate to hormone imbalance. This is important. First and foremost, we gain weight. And this is the most common thing that I hear is, why have I suddenly put on 10 pounds without changing anything? And it always, and I mean always, is in the stomach. It's the muffin top. It's the tube. It's the gut. Suddenly there's weight gain and it's right there and it's, and you're going, what? And you exercise more, you might cut your calories more, you might go on the next best diet and it doesn't work. Or you might lose a couple pounds, but then it stops. So that is almost always the first thing that will happen. Uh, besides that, your, you know, or next in line, I should say, is our periods start to change. And, and that's for only those of you that are not on the pill, because you won't notice it if you're on the pill. Periods can just suddenly get heavier. That's a, that's a big one, is they'll just suddenly, oh, I'm getting a lot more heavy periods. I'm bleeding. I feel like I'm bleeding out. I've got blood clots. Like, what is happening here? Uh, cram really bad cramping can happen. You can get really tired and you feel like it's not just a few days now of PMS. Now we're talking possibly up to two weeks of PMS suddenly starts to happen. So you kind of get this window of, you know, a week to 10 days, 14 days of feeling okay. And then after ovulation, it just is a downward spiral of PM worse and worse PMS throughout the month. And that means anxiety. It can mean being on the emotional roller coaster, feeling tired, feeling crampy, just you know, cravings for sugar like crazy, <laughs> crazy sugar cravings um, are all signs of PMS. Okay. So that just becomes um, a longer, you know, when it was a few days, now it's suddenly, you know, like I said, a week to two weeks. As time goes on, you might notice uh, a difference in your sex drive uh, in the sense that it, it starts to go down where you, you know, you really don't feel like having sex very often anymore. It might start to hurt when you have sex, like you're not lubricated enough. Um, and, you know, you just are more prone just in general to anxiety and depression. You feel like you're on that emotional roller coaster. And spiritually, spiritually, you begin to yearn for something more in life. Uh, this one's hard to explain, but you, it's something more, you, you yearn for something more spiritually fulfilling. And you might not be able to interpret that like that inside yourself. You might not be like, hmm, I'm yearning for something more spiritual. <laughs> but it's more about you begin to question life more. Your values begin to change. Uh, what was once important to you shifts to something more meaningful. Um, and I, I think the best way to describe it is a yearning for something more fulfilling. It's there's something inside of you that begins to shift during this time. Now, ideally, when these changes begin, and this can be, like I said, in your late 30s, early 40s is when it usually tends to start to show up. Ideally, when these changes begin is when you want to start routinely checking your hormones. Now, 
if you went to your doctor at the ripe old age of 38 and said, hey, doc, I think these feelings of depression, lack of libido, and sudden weight gain is my hormones, he would assume, he wouldn't, sorry, he would assure you that you are much too young for this and tell you to exercise more and suggest starting an antidepressant, which is, this is very, very common response from a medical doctor because they think that you're fine until, you know, you're in your fifties basically, and you're not going to start to see this at an early age of in your late thirties. But trust me when I say it's like, super, super common. I would say in 80% of women, they start to feel it in their late thirties and it can happen sooner than that. It could certainly happen in your mid thirties, early thirties. When I was about 33, 34 is when it started for me, when I started to really notice a difference in my hormones and started to actively have them tested at that point, you know, so don't think that because you're even younger than 38, that it can't happen. Because if you're feeling what I was just talking about, then absolutely it could be your hormones and it would be best to have them checked. Now, for those older than the late 30s, early 40s, I'm sure that what I just discussed um, sounds very familiar as far as symptoms. And I bet a large handful of you uh, can, can say that, yes, you've, you're going through this, it's amplified now, and you are in the thick of it. Now, it's not to say that you shouldn't test your hormones earlier than this. You, can certain, you, you, can, you, you certainly can, especially if you're experiencing the symptoms like, um, in, now when I'm talking earlier, I mean in your 20s, um, you, you know, if you're experiencing infertility, PCOS, irregular periods, weight loss resistance, um, you can absolutely start checking your hormones as early as you want. So if you're in your 20s and you're listening to this uh, or early 30s, like me, you could, or like I was at the time, I'm not anymore in my early 30s, but you can get them tested then as well. If you're experiencing these problems, like find out what is going on because a lot of the time a doctor won't test you, even if you are having irregular periods or infertility. They 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 take a long time. I remember my doctor telling me that I couldn't because I couldn't get pregnant. But with my second child, he's like, "Oh, try for two years and then we'll test you." I was like, two years." I was like, "Yeah, right." And I ended up within three months. I went to another doctor and I said, "Look, I know I can't get pregnant right now. There's something wrong." And sure enough, they looked and I had endometrial buildup in my my fallopian tubes and they had to clear them out. One month later, I was pregnant. So, listen to your body. If you feel like you're experiencing these things, even if you're in your 20s, then by all means get your hormones tested. But generally, hormone imbalances begin in your late 30s to early 40s. When you get to your mid 40s, early 50s is when most women start to see the really obvious signs like irregular or missed periods, hot flashes, weight gain and weight, weight loss resistance, anxiety, depression, night sweats, dry vagina, osteoporosis, low to no sex drive, vagina atrophy, incontinence, and many more things. Now, those symptoms don't sound too pleasant, do they? Uh, hence the reason if you are listening to this and you're in your late 30s or early 40s and just starting to see some of these, of the lighter hormone imbalances, we'll call them, now is the time then to start testing so you can avoid some of the harder symptoms of perimenopause. Uh, testing until you are in menopause is recommended. Menopause is one year without a period. That's what is considered that you are in menopause is you have not had your period for one year. After menopause, you can opt to continue testing if you are actively taking hormone replacement. Um, and if you are um, wanting to monitor your adrenal health, which we'll explain later, but if you're wanting to monitor, maybe you've, you've had a hard time with stress and you've got had adrenal insufficiency or you feel the effects of stress and you want to monitor your cortisol and your DHEA levels, you can continue doing that. 
But once you are not experiencing all of those symptoms and you're sailing through those menopausal years with healthy blood sugar levels, healthy adrenal, adrenals, thyroid health, then I say there's no need to test because you're doing okay. Uh, personally, I've been testing my hormones since my early 30s as I had a lot of set symptoms of estrogen dominance, including the endometriosis uh, and other hormonal dysfunctions. I had lots of weight loss resistance. So from an early age, I've start, I had started testing, doing saliva testing. But I didn't start to regularly test until my early 40s, which brings us to the next question of how often should you test? I have found in my practice and what has personally worked best for me is once I hit 40, I began testing once a year, but you could certainly do it sooner than that, but no sooner than once every three months. So why test our hormones? Why not just take the supplements, take the bioidentical hormones or change our diet and cross our fingers and hope for the best? <laughs> well, you have... If, if you haven't yet taken my hormone quiz on my website, you're going to, if you then go over and take it, if you haven't yet, if you have taken my hormone quiz on my website, you're going to know that symptoms of hormone imbalance can often overlap one another, such as weight loss resistance. It's a symptom of both high and low estrogen, both high and low testosterone. Uh, bone loss can be low estrogen. It can be low progesterone. Anxiety can be low cortisol, low estrogen, low progesterone. Low sex drive can be low estrogen, low progesterone, and low testosterone. And so you can, in the testing, you can see it because I give you all of the ebooks for each of the hormones tested. So you can actually go through them and see, okay, which ones apply to me. Now, the quiz itself gives you your top culprit, um, but it's just a quiz. We don't actually know. It'll only, it'll just tally up basically what the, the most of that section of whatever section you hit the most of and that's your that's what you're going to get so that doesn't mean that you don't have other hormone imbalances usually if there's one there's multiple but many of these symptoms overlap each other so you can see that testing is really important to really pinpoint exactly what is going on because you don't want to take a supplement that, for instance, lowers your cortisol if you've got low cortisol. I just talked to a woman yesterday who was on, um, we just did her hormones, we just tested her hormones, and her cortisol was really, really high, like at the top of the, uh, top of the range for three out of the four, which means that she's got a lot of stress going on. She's got, you know, we need to bring that cortisol down. And she said, oh, well, I'm taking an adrenal supplement. I said, let me see what the ingredients are. This is something I see all the time. Well, the ingredients had, I think there was about six different things in the supplement. I would say five out of the six were all things that raised cortisol. So here she is on this, what's called an adrenal supplement or adrenal support, but there were all things to raise cortisol. So do you think that woman needed that? Heck no. She was adding fuel to her fire. So, we, so really important, as you can see, like there's other things too, like you might think you've got low estrogen because you've got hot flashes. When in actual fact, it's the low progesterone causing it for you. Now it's more common to have it, have it be low progest low estrogen that causes that, but there are some women that it's the low progesterone that causes the hot flashes. So you don't want to be taking estrogen if you've got estrogen dominance. So really important to kind of, to get an idea of where your hormones are sitting because you might think one thing, you might have marked yes on the quiz to all of this one section when in actual fact it wasn't that, it was something else. So testing can help you get control of the symptoms before they get worse. It gets you to be proactive and ensure that you are living a quality life and not suffering needlessly 
as we tend to ignore these symptoms and suffer through them because they they, they creep up as we age, right? As we get into those late 30s, like you don't put it together. You don't think to yourself that that five pounds that you just gained was hormones. Uh, you don't think that the heavy periods that you are sometimes getting is your hormones. You don't start to put it together because we think that that's not supposed to happen until we're in our 50s. It's not supposed to happen when we're in our 30s. So really, it's, it's a good idea to get on top of it as soon as possible. So which hormones should we be testing as we age? Now, I'm not going to go into each of these hormones in great detail as they deserve an entire podcast dedicated to each one, truly. Um, and I've done a lot of podcast episodes already on certain hormones, and I will refer to those when we're talking about these hormones that you should have tested. So, but first and foremost, estrogen. Uh, you can listen to episode 102, which is everything you need to know about perimenopausal weight gain. And that talks a lot about estrogen and estrogen dropping as well. Episode 90, you can listen to, which is talks about estrogen dominance. So too much estrogen in the body and what to look out for. Estrogen fluctuates widely in our perimenopausal years. It's a full on roller coaster. Uh, when there's too much or too little, you can experience a wide range of often very debilitating symptoms. It's produced mainly in your ovaries. So as you age, it will decrease to 1% of your levels of when you were menstruating. 1%. So that can cause a whole slew of horrible, horrible symptoms as you begin to go through perimenopause. Um, progesterone, estrogen's little sidekick, they work in tandem together, also produced in the ovaries, starts its decline usually well before estrogen. It tends to drop by about 75% during perimenopause years, while estrogen drops by about 25% in those early years. Uh, it can affect and, and cause something called estrogen dominance. So once again, you can listen to the estrogen dominant episode on that. And you can also listen to episode 98 called Adrenaline Dominance with Dr. Michael Platt. He talks extensively about the use of progesterone, uh, bioidentical progesterone cream, and also just the hormone progesterone. So that's a great episode. But so I, I, I think that that's probably the most common cause of early symptoms of perimenopause. When we're in that late 30, early 40 range, it tends to be that progesterone has dropped and it causes anxiety and heavy periods and uh, sleep insomnia and things like that. So it's sort of thing, that's the sort of thing that you really, you know, if you can add in a little progesterone at that time, you can get great relief. Another one is testosterone. Now we tend to think of testosterone as the man hormone, and it is, it's an androgen hormone. It's a male hormone, but it is produced in your ovaries as well as other areas of your body. But so because it's produced in the, in the ovaries, once they start to decline with age, uh, the testosterone will go down with the estrogen and progesterone. Now, your adrenals also produce it. So it's important to keep... And actually, your adrenals will also produce progesterone and estrogen. So as your ovaries start to decline, the adrenal glands take over the little production of those hormones. And so very important to keep those that adrenal health going because you want your, your adrenals to take over making those little bits of hormones um, that your ovaries no longer make. Now, testosterone is really important for women, like really, really important. It's really important for our heart health, our brain health, uh, muscles, uh, muscle recovery, our bones. Uh, but too much testosterone can also be a problem. And it's often seen these days because it coincides with insulin resistance. Uh, people, women will get male characteristics um, when they've got too much testosterone, right? Makes sense. If you've got too much testosterone, they start to get facial hair. Uh, they can get something called PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. Uh, 
not great. Uh, and like I said, very common. It causes infertility. It's the leading cause of infertility, PCOS. So too much testosterone is also important, um, as is too little testosterone, which, like I said, can have to do with uh, muscle recovery. It has to do with your sex drive, of course. A lot of women whose testosterone goes down, their sex drive goes down. So all of these very important things that you probably didn't realize testosterone was such an important hormone in the female body. You also want to have your cortisol tested, which is an adrenal hormone produced in your adrenal glands. This is your fight or flight hormone. This is a big one that can be tested you know, really at any age, but as we become more sensitive to the effects of stress as we age, it impacts our cortisol levels. Uh, it's, it's a known fact that the healthier your cortisol, cortisol levels are as you age, the less symptoms of perimenopause you will have. So there's a huge tie-in there. If you're experiencing a lot of perimenopause symptoms, um, there's a good chance that there is an issue with your cortisol or DHEA levels. Uh, you can listen to episode 108 and 110 called The Stress Epidemic, part one and part two. And I talk all about cortisol in those ones and the effects on the body and other hormones. Uh, and then another adrenal hormone is called DHEA. It's a, an adrenal and an androgen hormone. Uh, it should be tested because it's a good indicator, once again, of your stress levels. As well, it's a precursor to important hormones like testosterone and estrogen. It can help slow the aging process, improve well-being and body composition. As well, some studies show it can help with depression and vaginal atrophy. Actually, Dr. Anna Kabeca, who was uh, on an episode called Solving Perimenopause, uh, episode 73, her and I talk about this, and she's got a, a great little product called Jolva. Uh, that has DHEA in it, and it's actually to put on the vulva to help lubricate it. Uh, next hormone in line that's very, very, very important is thyroid. Now, thyroid should be checked for all ages. If you have any symptoms of weight loss resistance or just any symptoms of hypothyroidism, but as you age, it is quite common for women to develop hypothyroidism in perimenopause. As other hormones become depleted, it can cause hypothyroidism. So if you already had a low-functioning thyroid, perimenopause will make it even worse. So if you're experiencing weight loss resistance with age, I tell you, thyroid has got to be checked. You don't take your doctor, when your doctor says you don't have a thyroid problem because they checked your thyroid stimulating hormone, TSH, that is not always an indicator of whether or not you have hypothyroidism. You really want to get a full thyroid panel and we'll talk about that. Uh, and then last is, and it's this, you can certainly have more hormones tested. There's other ones, but this is like, I'm giving you the main seven here, uh, which the last one is insulin. Like thyroid hormone can, um, like thyroid, women can develop insulin resistance when they go through perimenopause. This is really important as one of the causes of weight gain and resistance in perimenopause is low levels of estrogen can cause, that can cause high cortisol, low thyroid, and high testosterone, and cause you to have insulin resistance because estrogen can make you, um, can make you uh, be in, so insulin resistant if, when you have low levels of estrogen because estrogen helps you to be insulin sensitive. But low levels of all of those things can contribute to insulin resistance. So, sorry, not all low levels. So lo the low, the high cortisol, low thyroid and high testosterone can, I don't think I said that right, can uh, increase your susceptibility to insulin resistance. Okay, I got that right. <laughs> okay, so those are the seven key hormones that we want to stay on top of for optimal health and weight management. 
If you head over to KarenMartel.com, you can take the hormone quiz that can help you get started on which of these hormones could be causing your problems out of the seven. Uh, but ideally, you want to have these properly tested. There are many ways you can do this. Um, at your doctor's office, majority of medical doctors, family physis physicians, only test your hormones by drawing blood, which is called serum testing. Serum testing is excellent for testing your thyroid hormones and something called your hemoglobin A1C, which is a marker of blood sugar over a three-month period to help you determine if you have insulin resistance. So it's the best way to test insulin, like to see where you are with your insulin resistance, um, rather than actually testing insulin. Testing insulin isn't a great marker, actually, of insulin resistance. So it's better to have your hemoglobin A1C tested with your doctor. Um, they can also test... Uh, your fasting blood glucose, as well as through serum, they can test your um, follicular stimulating hormone and your luteinizing stimulating hormone. And when those are high, then it is it can tell you that you are in menopause or going through perimenopause because those hormones are what stimulates the eggs to be released. And when there's no, not a lot of eggs left to be released because your ovaries are declining and you got no eggs left, which means you can't get pregnant, the follicular stimulating hormone will actually go up because it's trying hard to stimulate the ovaries to let go of an egg. So it can be a sign of menopause, that you're in menopause if it's high enough. So that is something your doctor can test for. But when it comes to your other hormones like estrogen and progesterone, unfortunately for most sex hormones, there's no distinction made in serum between bound and free hormones. This may lead to misleading results in which hormone levels appear to be normal or even high normal because of an abundance of bound hormones. When a hormone is bound, it means it is bound to a protein. And when they are bound, your body cannot utilize the, that hormone within the cells. What you want to see is the level of free hormones, the ones that are swimming around able to be grabbed onto by a receptor and used within the cell. So, so your serum levels can look normal when they aren't normal. They can still be reflective of levels when they are really low. Like, so if you are, you know, if you've got really low estrogen and low progesterone because you're in menopause or close to it, it often that is reflected in serum because even the bound levels will be lowered. But in general, if you are a menstruating woman, you will only be testing bound hormones. And this can be very misleading. I just had a woman recently who, who did just blood testing for her testosterone and it looked like she had really low levels. So her doctor put her on testosterone and she broke out in cystic acne all over her back. She had known PCOS, which is, tells you that the testosterone is too high. When we did her saliva hormone test, her testosterone was off the charts high. So here she was taking testosterone when her free levels of testosterone were extremely high and she should not have been on testosterone. So it can really give you misleading results. Even my own, I've done, I always do serum and saliva. The, the serum showed me that I had okay estrogen levels. And my saliva showed me that I had next to no estrogen. And I definitely, my symptoms reflected that. My period was becoming irregular. I was having crazy hot flashes at nighttime. Uh, I had some other estrogen issues happening, but it didn't, my doctor was like, oh yeah, you're fine. And I was like, actually, no, I'm not. And I showed her my saliva test and she, she was great. So she was like, oh yeah, these are low. And she prescribed some estrogen for me and which helped immensely. So you can get misleading results, but it is still worth doing if this is all you can do.
Another huge limitation of serum hormone testing is it's a snapshot, a single point test. Because hormones are secreted in a pulsatile manner over the course of the day and night, it is difficult to know whether the levels in serum represent a peak usually or something in between or a peak or a valley or or something in between this is especially important for testing the adrenal hormone cortisol because a doctor will say oh yeah sure i'll test your cortisol and they're going to give you this snapshot in time well it's important to test your cortisol for at least four points in the day if you're having insomnia issues you can do more than that and test it also throughout the night but Cortisol comes up high the first half of the day and then lowers the second half of the day. And you, you want to see where it is at all of those times because let's say you go in the morning and you get your cortisol taken in the morning, it's going to look like it's really high. Well, what if it crashes for the rest of the day? Well, that would tell us that you've got adrenal insufficiency. Um, it could look really low, but what if you have it really high at night and you start taking these adrenal supplements that raise your cortisol when you've already got too high of cortisol later in the day, causing you insomnia? All right. So it also, they don't even, not only change within a day, you guys, they drastically change week to week in a cycling woman even in a non-cycling woman, but more so in the cycling woman. Majority of doctors won't tell you to go on a certain day of the month, but rather just test you randomly. So if you don't know what day your cycle, what day of your cycle you're on, you won't know if you're too high or too low. Uh, for example, progesterone in the first half of your cycle, you produce minuscule amounts of progesterone. And, but you that's when you produce the most estrogen. The second half of your cycle, you produce both estrogen and progesterone. And so you want to see on the days that it should be highest to know whether or not you're producing proper amounts of progesterone. If your doctor tests you in the first half of your cycle, it's going to look like you've got no progesterone when you could have completely normal levels. Same with your estrogen. It might look like you have no or too high because you're, you, if you test on day 12, for instance, it's going to look like you have really high estrogen, but it's supposed to be high on day 12. So if you're going to go get tested with your doctor through serum blood testing, then be sure to track what day you went in on. Um, you want to preferably do it on days 19, 20, or 21 of your cycle, first day being the first day of your period, because that is when progesterone should be the highest, and then they'll give you a range, a number of ranges for, when, for where your levels should be during that time of the month, all right? Finally, serum hormone testing does not typically allow for the measurement of estrogen, androgen, and adrenal metabolites. So we will, and we'll get into what those are, uh, but they will not test those. Now, the advantage to this, once again, though, is you usually get it for free <laughs> because it's through your medical doctor at least in Canada. And in the United States, you might have to pay for it, but it usually tends to be less than going through a private lab. So definitely can be worth doing, especially if you can't afford to buy a saliva or a urine hormone kit. Uh, so next on the list, saliva hormone testing. Uh, very non-invasive. It can be done from the comforts of your own home, which is really nice. Uh, saliva hormone tests are the ones that I personally work with and have for many, many years. Saliva test kits allow for multiple collections over a period of day, a period of the day, or you can actually get a whole month's worth if you really want to see if you have abnormal cycles. Uh, saliva is best used to evaluate um, the levels and the balance and flow between estrogen and progesterone which is really important to determine if you've got estrogen dominance. It is also considered the gold standard for testing your cortisol levels and patterns. Remember I was talking about how cortisol goes up and down throughout the day. Cortisol is the most reliable, uh, Cortisol saliva testing is the most reliable when it comes to let's see where it is at certain times of the day so we can address it properly. A saliva test measures free hormone levels. 
it does not test bound. And remember, the bound ones are the ones that are bound to a protein that you can't use. It's the free levels that you can. Now, saliva hormone testing tends to be the least expensive at-home hormone test kit compared to the urine testing, which we'll get to. It's very easy to do. Like I said, it's non-invasive. Unlike serum and urine, you do not need a licensed practitioner to order it for you unless, unless you live in California, Maryland, or New York. Those three, you have to have a licensed professional even to order a saliva test kit. Now, there's ways around that. I have uh, people that will contact me that live in those states, and the best way to get one then is to have the kit sent to somebody out of state, and then that person can send it to you because the lab itself can't directly send into that state unless you've been, unless it's been ordered through a doctor or, or some other licensed professional chiropractor, uh, some pharmacists. So when it comes to the saliva hormone testing, it is limited to certain hormones. It does not test metabolites, but it can test estradiol. These are the most common things to be tested through the saliva kit. Estradiol, which is your main estrogen that's produced in your ovaries that causes the main issues for women um, as we age, progesterone, testosterone, DHEA, and a four-point cortisol test or more. You can get, I've done a 24-hour one before, so I've got eight tests done. But in general, it's a four-point cortisol test done throughout the day. Now, these are the most important hormones to test besides thyroid and your blood glucose levels to see where your insulin's at. Uh, but saliva does not test, once again, it does not test the metabolites, which brings us to the Dutch hormone test, which is your, the standard urine hormone test. Urine, hor urine hormone test can be done from home, but must be ordered by a licensed physician or online. You can buy these online um, through a licensed site basically like a person that's running like a doctor running a site or a functional medicine practitioner running a website and they can they will sell them off of their website uh it is the most expensive kit but it is also the most comprehensive uh we'll discuss prices later on but urine is collected over a 24-hour period and is the most reliable way to evaluate what is called steroid hormone metabolites like saliva it, it will test unbound hormone levels which once again that's preferred so why would you want to test your hormone metabolites? Well, hormone metabolite testing can show whether the production of a given hormone is high or low as well, whether these hormones are being eliminated safely from the body or building up to the point where they may cause health risks. It will test steroid hormone metabolites, which will include cortisol, estrogen, and testosterone metabolites. When these hormones complete their work inside the body and new hormones are produced, active hormones need to be cleared from the body via urine. Because steroid hormones don't dissolve well in water, they can't pass straight into the urine. Instead, they must be broken down in the liver and kidneys to form water-soluble metabolites that can be excre excreted through the urine. Now, certain metabolites can be harmful, and this is why we want to test them. If they are produced in excess, for instance, estrogen metabolites, they can have an impact on your risk of hormone-driven cancers like estrogen-driven breast cancer. Uh, another really important one is cortisol metabolites. It can help determine where there is stress-related issues um, and if there are concern, like if you're not breaking down that cortisol properly, you want to take or the estrogen or the androgens, then you can address them with certain supplements that will help you break those hormones down so they don't build up in the body. So it's a really great way to determine, you know, the course of what supplements to be taking if you need that assistance in breaking those hormones down. 
I personally did a DNA test actually that told me that I was a, I could break down the ester, I can process the estrogen, but I couldn't eliminate my metabolites very well. So now because of that, I take, because my estrogen is low and I take estrogen, I now know I need to take stuff on top of that to help with getting rid of those metabolites. So I have to take certain um, vitamins and supplements and minerals that will help with that process. So the urine test can tell you the same thing. <clears throat> Last but not least is blood spot testing. Now dried blood spot testing can be done from home, once again, like saliva testing and does not need a licensed practitioner to order it. This is something I offer as well with the saliva kits or by itself. It's a form of collection where you place drops of blood on a filter card often, I mean, sorry, after a finger prick with a lancet. Now it doesn't hurt. Don't worry. Uh, people think what? Uh, but no, you just this little poke and then you, you just squeeze out the blood onto the paper. Once dry blood spot can uh, cards are extremely stable for shipment and storage, and the dried blood format offers excellent correlation with serum tests. So why measure blood spot? Well, it's ideal for measuring hormones like insulin, vitamin D, and yes, vitamin D is a hormone. It's not actually a vitamin. Um, but most important is it can test your thyroid hormones. Now, for most people, especially people in Canada, having your doctor order these labs with a blood draw is much more affordable. However, in Canada, our medical system has recently changed and the access to thyroid hormone testing is has become extremely challenging because we are, they are not allowed to test anything but TSH, which is their thyroid stimulating hormone. And oftentimes you'll have a misdiagnosis of hypothyroidism and they'll tell you you don't have any problems because your TSH looks fine. When had they checked your T4, your free T3 and your free T4, it would have shown that there was actually deficiency. And so it's not always reflected in TSH. So they're going by a very old model of testing. Um, they need to update it, but Canada's medical system they aren't allowed to test past that. And endocrinologist can, but your regular MD can't. So if you feel like you have hypothyroidism or maybe you were diagnosed with it, but your doctor is not checking your numbers, then this is key, uh, a key test to get from home, that you can do from home that's extremely accurate uh, and to see whether or not you actually do have hypothyroidism. Uh, or you know you're not medicated enough. You want to check your current status on your medication. Uh, it can be very very helpful for, to be able to do that. I actually just had a hormone test uh, consultation yesterday, and the woman was in her fifties, and her TSH. She did the full comprehensive uh, hormone profile, so she did the saliva hormone test kit as well as the blood spot test kit for thyroid. And it came out that her TSH was totally normal, her T4 was normal, and her T3 was rock bottom. And your free T3 is what your metabolism needs the most. So she was super hypothyroid and had never in all of her 50 years been diagnosed with it. So she was probably suffering needlessly all this time. And the same thing happened to me. My T4 and my TSH were the only things that ever got checked and they always looked normal. And finally, I got a doctor to test my free T3 and it came back rock bottom. So I'd been hypothyroid for who knows how long um, and not being proper, properly uh, medicated for it. And it's led me down a whole different road, which we won't get into. But once again, just very, very important. Um, so Let's talk about, you know, prices of all of these ways of getting tested, because I think that that's important to everybody to hear. And also just like a recap of the pros and cons of each. So serum testing, usually free when ordered by a doctor. Um, U.S. residents, it may, you may have to pay out of pocket for it if you don't have uh, a medical, extended medical or ex a medical plan. But in Canada, most of you, you can get 
serum blood testing. You can go in, your doctor might laugh at you and say you're not you shouldn't have your progesterone estrogen tested when you're in your early 40s or late 30s. But if you can get them to do it, it's usually free, which is great. Just do it on those certain days and you'll get a, you know, at least a, a picture of what it could look like, at least of your bound hormones. If you have to pay out of pocket um, it, here in Canada, if you want to pay for those thyroid hormones or you want to, if you have to pay out of pocket down in the States, they'll vary anywhere between 20 usually to $50 per hormone. Um, now, that that's you know when you're if you just need one or two that could be well worth it to get especially for your thyroid. I always tell my my clients if you, if if you can tell your doctor you're just going to pay out of pocket for those thyroid tests. Just get them done, and then they tend to be a lot less to have them done that way than if you were to pay for them through a private lab um, like the one that I offer. It's much more than that to have them all done. So. It could be well worth paying out of pocket for it. Uh, so the saliva test kits for the base, and but just remember the, the pros and cons of that. Yes, it's for free, but it's only testing your bound hormones. And for a cycling woman, you're going to just get this snapshot in time and it could be the wrong day, et cetera, et cetera. But it's cheap. <laughs> so that, that's, that's the big bonus to that one. Uh, saliva hormone test kits for the basic panel, which is the estradiol, progesterone, DHEA, testosterone, and the four-point cortisol test to order online off my site. And prices may vary slightly between practitioners, but uh, the main lab used in the United States and in Canada, we do Rocky Mountain here in Canada, which is the Canadian lab, but many practitioners here will also use ZRT, which is the one that I use. And usually in the States, oftentimes they use ZRT as well. It's one of the most popular hormone testing labs in North America. And so prices are set by the lab. So for the basic panel, it's uh, the ones that the hormones that I just said, that's 270 and that's in US dollars. Sorry, Canadians. Because <laughs> um, it's a US lab, so it's US prices, uh, which converts to 380 Canadian because right now anyways, our dollar is horrible. So uh, 270 is a pretty reasonable price if you're down in the States. 380 is definitely on the steep side. So um, that's to each his own on that one, uh, but that's what they are. The adrenal profile, which will test four-point cortisol and DHEA, uh, that one runs to 190 US. And so that could be if you know what your other hormones are, maybe you want to get serum, estrogen, and progesterone tested, but you want to see that four-point cortisol test. Uh, then you can just do the adrenal profile and it's 190. So that's, that's a pretty good price. Um, there's also a combo saliva test kit, which will include all of the ones that I just talked about, as well as a thyroid blood spot test kit, which will test the full thyroid panel. Uh, and that one goes for 365 US. The great thing about saliva, it's going to test unbound hormones, so it's more accurate than serum. It's going to give you a four-point cortisol test. Doesn't need a visit to a doctor's office. Uh, my kits actually include a 20-minute interpretation session to go over the results and to make suggestions, like supplement suggestions, um, foods like diet suggestions, etc., depending on what your results are. Now, and I think I have, I've yet to find anyone else that offers that, that offers a free 20-minute session with the purchase of a kit. So it's a good deal. Of course, I got I to tell you about what I got to offer, ladies. <laughs> the downfall is there's certain states that you can't do it in. So that was um, California, Maryland, and New York. But if you have someone out of state, they can ship it to you. And it doesn't test your metabolites. Uh, which can definitely be really uh, important, especially if you've got a history of breast cancer. So uh, it's a great starting point. Uh, of course, it's it's great for me because I can order it and I don't have to be a licensed medical practitioner to do it. And for you, you don't have to go make an initial appointment with a practitioner, which can sometimes run you a lot of money, like 
you know, $400 sometimes just for the visit to a functional medicine practitioner. So you put that on top of the saliva hormone kit and you're looking at almost $1,000 now for that hormone test. So uh, yet next in line is the urine hormone tests. They run about 400 US dollars. And in Canada, they used to be 600, but now they're offering it for the same price around four, but in Canadian, so around 400 Canadian, you can get a urine hormone test now. Uh, but in order to interpret your results, you do need a doctor to interpret them. You need someone that's familiar with the hormone test kit. I mean, the urine hormone test kit. So you can order these, like I said, on, on certain websites, but if you don't know what you're looking at, and it, some of them are even confusing for me to look at because I'm not trained to look at those. And I, I understand them because I understand, um, hormones, but even me, I would want somebody, I would even go take mine to a naturopath to have them help me interpret it better. So you are going to want to anyone else that doesn't understand hormones, trust me, you're going to want to go see a doctor or a naturopath that's familiar with Dutch testing that can interpret your results for you and help you out with what it is that you need to take to like, you know, if your metabolites aren't doing well and you're not metabolizing estrogen very well, you're going to want somebody that's going to know what to suggest to you in order to help that out or with your cortisol. Uh, so you can get this, you can't get this through a medical doctor. You can only get this through uh, a, like a naturopath, a functional medicine practitioner, or a medical doctor that has functional medicine pr training. But if you went to your, just your regular family doctor, they don't sell Dutch urine testing kits. Okay. So just to keep that in mind. Uh, now, as we talked about before, this is extremely beneficial because you're going to be able to test hormone levels as well as the metabolites. Uh, so if you have that history of breast cancer, you've got adrenal issues, you do want to see those metabolites. If you can afford the test, it's definitely um, a great one to get because you're going to get a bigger idea of, you know, what can, what, what you can work with as far as getting those metabolites. And, and I think it's a great, great test. I really do. And now that I've reached the age that I have, <clears throat> I plan to do both of those, especially now that I know that estrogen, I have troubles metabolizing it. I will now start testing both my estrogen, um, both my, I'll start testing my hormones, both in urine and in saliva. Now that I know that because I'll do saliva because it's cheaper for me, but uh, I will, you know, once in a while do the urine one as well. So the next blood spot testing for a thyroid panel is 195 US dollars, and that includes T free T4, free T3, uh, thyroid peroxidase um, antibodies, and your thyroid stimulating hormone. The advantage is for some, it's really hard to get a doctor to test for thyroid, like I talked about, especially here in Canada. And it's often misdiagnosed. Uh, blood spot testing can also test insulin, vitamin levels, as well as your hemoglobin A1C, which is a great indicator of insulin resistance. So those are, that is it. Those are your options, ladies. <laughs> I hope I've given you all the information you need to make an educated decision on what hormone test kit is best for you. As you can see, there's advantages and disadvantages to each one. If you're interested in getting hormone test kit and you have further questions, then email me at karen at karenmartel.com. You can look at what I have to offer by heading over to karenmartel.com. Um, like I said before, I only offer blood spot test kits as well as saliva test kits, not the urine. Uh, and each test kit will, be, will include a free 20-minute interpretation session. So next week, tune in for an interview with Dr. Nadia Petiguanya, who is a naturopathic doctor who has just published a new book on the use of low-carb and fasting diets for PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. Uh, 
but her and I, we dive into all things fasting and weight loss and women in fasting and low carb diets. So there's stuff in there for everybody, not just people with PCOS. So be sure to tune into that. Also, don't forget to send in your questions for our first Q&A episode coming up later this month. The link for that will be in the show notes. All right, ladies, have an awesome day wherever you are in the world, and I will talk to you next week. I hope you enjoyed today's show. New episodes come out every Thursday, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of them. You can also find me at karenmartell.com and you can get free recipes and weight loss tips by following me on Instagram and Facebook at Karen Martell Nutrition.